Right, hello everyone, my name's Hannah Rice. I work at the East Riding Archives, which is based at the Treasure House in the lovely market town of Beverly. Now it's such a privilege to be able to talk to you today about one of our digital engagement workshops called Archives in 3D, which combines historical reconstruction with the creative reuse of archives and local studies collections, and also 3D modeling. Now 3D modeling is such a multidisciplinary tool, and it draws upon skills from outside of archives and the wider heritage sector, so I intend to talk a bit about this multidisciplinary nature and how we at the East Riding Archives have combined the collections with the 3D and I'll explain some of the practicalities and also the impact um, of this series of workshops. So just to give you all a bit of context to these workshops, hopefully you might all be aware that this year is Hull City of Culture 2017 and it's a huge exciting uh, thing for the City of Hull and also the wider East Riding region. I must admit, it's, um, lots of kudos should go to uh, the Hull History Centre in particular for archiving um, this amazing year. As this really is our chance to show off our culture and our heritage and to get our communities involved in workshops and events throughout the year. And so the East Riding Yorkshire Council is um, a principal partner with the whole City of Culture um, initiative. Um, we were making contributions towards the events programme. So for us at the East Riding Archives, um, one of our contributions was Archives in 3D, aimed at celebrating uh, Hull and East Riding heritage through our collections. So what exactly is Archives in 3D? Well, Archives in 3D are full-day workshops teaching people how to create their own historical reconstructions of our local built heritage um, using our collections. So if you've ever seen those reconstructions in programs such as Time Team, now those are the types of outputs that we were hoping to teach people exactly how to do themselves. So 3D modeling is something that I've personally been doing for about eight years outside of my life in archives. And I was more than happy to bring this skill in and facilitate these workshops. So we've done three workshops so far, each with a different architectural theme. So the first session um, that we, we did was focused on the historical architecture of Beverly, which is where our archives are based. And for the two whole city of culture workshops, um, those are based on medieval Tudor and Elizabethan Hull and East riding. And for these, we focused on buildings that were currently undergoing either highly publicized excavation work or restoration work as part of the whole 2017 year. And these were buildings um, such as Hull's Beverly Gate and also King Henry VIII's Hull Castle. So why exactly digital 3D modeling? Well, 3D modeling in its digital form is the process of creating a graphic representation of something that appears three-dimensional, but it's presented on a two-dimensional surface, so such as a computer screen. So as you can see from this, this video here, they can be highly interactive. You can actually zoom into your model. You can rotate around it, you can annotate it, and you can even walk around it if you've got the correct technologies or applications. So for example, when combined with virtual reality headsets or augmented reality applications on tablet devices, they can provide really immersive experiences. Your creations can also be quite easy to disseminate. So for example, you can share your models on the web using um, platforms such as Sketchfab. And Sketchfab will allow you to embed your 3D models onto your web pages, your social media posts, and also your blogs. So other people can actually view and interact with the 3D models that you create. Now something that I was particularly keen to get across in these workshops was that 3D modeling skills transcend across different disciplines outside of archives and heritage. So the skills used in 3D modeling can be seen in the design, engineering, and construction industry, most notably in the form of computer-aided design models or buildings information models, which are all very precise, uh, mathematically-based type models. The entertainment industry is also known for the use of computer-generated imagery within films, video games, and also animations. But more recently, however, the heritage sector, in particular museums and archaeology, have also used such technologies as storytelling devices for the reconstruction and the communication of people and places from the past. 
So you can also engage people with at-risk heritage or inaccessible heritage using these tools. So you may have seen such reconstructions um, presented in historical documentaries, in publications, either um, offline, in printed publications or online, or on interactive screens at heritage sites and museums. So and just as 3D draws upon skills from multiple disciplines, I was really keen to get across in these workshops to our participants that the 3D models that we create during the session can also have multiple end uses. So they could be included within your own historical documentary that you're creating, could be your own standalone artwork, or even featured within your own animation or a video game. So you can take a more artistic um, or an academic approach to the creation of your model. You can craft your model to support or visualize an academic theory. Also during the workshop, I had example 3D prints on show, um, just in the, as in the first image there on the left uh, of one of our local built heritage called the North Bar in Beverly. Now this was to show that you could create something really tangible from this 3D, well, from this digital 3D modeling process. So these are ideal for educational sessions, object handling, or if you just like a piece of history sitting on your desk. So the process of 3D modeling, when combined with archives, is quite important as it gets you to piece together every bit of historical evidence in order to formulate a picture or your interpretation. So every object that you model on the screen comes from a decision made from interpreting the archives. So when it actually came to the delivery of these workshops, I was really keen to vary up a bit with some talks and also some interactivity. So the day was split into two main parts. In the morning, I would give an introductory talk, firstly on the digital heritage applications of 3D modeling, and I'd give some examples of the potential of the skills that I was going to be teaching our class, hopefully without scaring anyone off. So I'd then bring it back to the archives, and then show everyone some documents that I've got out on display um, relating to the buildings that we were going to be reconstructing. And I'd then explain exactly how to research or conduct research within our archives and explain what types of records are suitable uh, for historical reconstruction type projects. And then part two was about putting this theory into practice um, using the free 3D modeling software called Blender. Now in this part, I would lead an interactive tutorial on the 3D modeling basics, where all together, step by step, we would reconstruct a building which is represented uh, within our collections, such as um, Hull's Beverly Gate or Henry VIII's Hull's Castle, for example. So in the archives in 3D workshops, participants would not only be learning how to create something in 3D, so they'd be de developing their digital skills, they would also be learning about architectural and local history. They'd develop their interpretation skills, and they'd also become more familiar um, with our service as an archive. So they'd learn how to use our online catalog and also to conduct research within our collections. So it really is this um, multifaceted learning experience for our participants. So there is this interest in creating historical reconstructions and architectural reconstructions with some level of accuracy. And this is where archives can really help with some of those facts which you can translate into your digital world using um, the 3D modeling process. So speaking of that process, this here is an overview of the process that I was teaching our participants all the way from the in initial research stage through to the final outcome. So you begin by gathering research material uh, and reference material within archives and local studies in order to find uh, visual and intellectual evidence to inform your 3D reconstruction. So for example, maps and town plans can provide you with an idea of the layout of the geography and the terrain that you're constructing. A bit more of a challenge, but descriptions found in correspondence, letters, can help you piece together what a place looked like at one point in time, as well as more visual material, such as photographs, postcards, and also illustrations. And for architectural reconstructions, building plans are really ideal for modeling ground plans um, and also elevations. So you can either work from hard copies 
or for anything visual, it is better to obtain digital versions that you can actually import directly into your 3D modeling software. So once you've created your model, it will then be ready for use. Again, you've got the 3D printed tangible elements, and you've also got some digital outcomes of your model for use in educational contexts or entertainment contexts. So I'm now going to show you a quick clip of the modeling process in action. I felt it'd be a lot more easier to do this than show you a live 3D modeling demonstration. So here's King Henry VIII's castle on the east bank of the River Hull, modeled in Blender software. So this is the exact process that our participants followed in the modeling tutorials. As you can see, it's a little bit like dot to dot. So we've imported our digital image. In this case, it's a ground plan uh, from our collections. And we're now placing points around the plan outline in order to formulate our object. Now, 3D models are made up of polygon objects. They've got points, edges, and faces. And in order to form our reconstruction, we need to manipulate these points, edges, and faces. So Hull Castle is made up of two block houses, a central castle, and two curtain walls. Now, each of these architectural features will need to be modeled as a separate component so you can manage the modeling of each feature a lot more easier. And if you do need to go back and edit anything, you can quite easily do so. So it's always important to bear in mind that how you construct your model will affect the outcome. It is a very time consuming process, so it's best to know your aims before you begin, um, such as knowing exactly what you intend your 3D model to do, what you would like this reconstruction to communicate, who exactly is the audience, and also what technologies are required to actually present this model once you've completed it. So the model in this video is plain and untextured. The next step would be to find out exactly what materials King Henry VIII's castle would have been constructed from. So to do this, we would need to investigate just a bit further in the archives, perhaps see if there's any archeological records of any materials which were used at the site. And we could then apply a photographic texture or a digitally painted texture to this model um, in order to bring it to life. Now, if we're feeling really ambitious, we could even look into populating our model with some human figures. However, a word of caution, always be wary of the uncanny valley effect when placing humans um, into your models, um, as it's quite difficult to do and to get it realistic. So we've done three workshops so far, and the promotion of the, the two City of Culture workshops was particularly helped by the City of Culture marketing. And it really pushed out the events to more people, to the point where I actually didn't get around to doing a press release, as both of the events filled up in the space of two weeks. So what I was particularly pleased at was the diverse range of participants, each with their own reason for attending. And I think it was possibly due to us combining the 3D with the archives, with 3D as something that's not normally associated with archives or archives outreach. So we had academics from the local university who were very interested in digital modeling as a tool to portray their research in a more accessible or a visual format. We had a few council employees, one from the education team, the library service, and also another from IT. And I must admit, it's quite reassuring to, to have someone from your council IT attend a digital workshop on a Saturday, as you, you never quite know how the technology will behave on the day. So it was nice for him to attend. We also had 3D modeling enthusiasts who had never visited an archive before, um, and who came just looking for training in a new piece of software. We had staff from other archive services interested in digital engagement. And we also had a participant attend wanting some advice on how he could develop his own model of his um, local village church. So it was really great to see that this digital modeling attracted such a wide range of participants, all from different backgrounds, for professional um, and personal reasons. So the general feedback was also very positive. Um, participants said they had developed new skills, both technical and interpretation and that they actually enjoyed seeing original documents um, in a digital workshop. They really liked that contrast. Uh, most of all, they said they enjoyed the session and they had fun. Now, as well as digital skills, the actual model creation process um, was also a learning experience in its own right. 
as participants were learning about the buildings that they were reconstructing, down to the individual windows and materials and architectural features and terminology. So they were learning about this whilst also learning about this, the wider historical context and engaging with the original documents. So this really helped meet the City of Culture initiative of promoting our heritage and our culture and educating about it as well. Now another point, important point to make was that those who were fresh to the archives now became more aware of our service and what we provide. They mentioned an awareness that archives are not just for academic research or for family history, which is quite an emphasis in, in our local authority archive. But they're also a trove of information which you can harness for creative type projects. So in terms of improvements, um, those are based around having the workshops as multiple day sessions, as it's quite a lot of information to take in all at once. But everybody took home a digital model after all completing the tutorial, so it was very rewarding for everyone to actually reflect on these digital creations that they had created within the space of uh, just a few hours. So as a service, uh, what have we learned? We've learned that these types of workshops have taken a lot of planning and a lot of experimentation. I had to start my planning quite early as I had to research content for the modeling and find documents in the archives which are suitable for a beginner's class in historical reconstruction. I also had to give the digital modeling tutorial a run through myself several times and to document every single click of a button which is something that you really don't think about when you're so used to working with a piece of software. Another important point is for the City of Culture workshops, I, I made use of a volunteer who was invaluable during the interactive uh, tutorial stage. And I had previously given them a tutorial for training. But the more people who can help out, the better really, to ensure that all the participants keep on track during the tutorial stage. Um, I felt that this was something that was missing from the initial pilot workshop. <coughs> Another important point to make is that we've learned that by us providing all of the equipment ready to go is a lot simpler than a bring your own device format. So we used a bring your own device format in the, the very first workshop and came about lots of difficulties with version control of the software that was installed on people's devices. Um, some of the um, the buttons were in different places, and of course, Mac versions are slightly different to Windows versions. And there was also the additional um, costs for us um, for hiring a pat tester for the day. So we changed this for the next two workshops. And in the so in the workshops where we provided the laptops ourselves, the only thing that was unexpected, but we will know for the future, um, is when people bring in their own specialist equipment, such as a specialist mouse. So thankfully on the day, that participant knew exactly what button corresponded to what, um, but it's something that we will know to anticipate um, in the future. So what next for these workshops? Well, we're really wanting to harness this increasing interest in Hull and East Riding from the City of Culture Year. Hull has just received a huge financial investment to regenerate a lot of their maritime heritage. So our next plan at the East Riding Archives will hopefully be more digital workshops promoting the maritime heritage of the region. So we're thinking coastal forts, lighthouses, and there's also this opportunity to reach out to maritime enthusiasts um, as physical model making um, is actually extremely popular in the maritime scene. So we might actually attract some model makers to the sessions. So it'd be great for us to tap into this audience pool um, it'd be very new for us and something interesting to explore next year. So just to summarise my talk, uh, Archives in 3D is all about teaching historical reconstruction using a medium that transcends multiple disciplines and which also has multiple end uses from academia through to art. For our participants, this 3D modelling process in itself was a whole learning experience where you can digitally piece together a visual interpretation of a historical building or a place from the past based on the intellectual and visual evidence shown within the archives. So you really do 
um, get to become familiar with the historical scene that you're recreating down to each individual architectural feature. And for us as a service, this multidisciplinary approach allowed us to attract such a wide variety of participants, some of whom who had never stepped into an archive before. So it's really great that we could give other people um, this toolkit to go and create their own uh, visualizations themselves, whilst hopefully inspiring them to visit an archive uh, at some point in the future. Thank you.